Good morning, friends, and welcome to Godly Play. This morning, I want to recap a few of the things we've talked about in recent weeks. Recap means to talk about something again, but maybe um, be a little shorter about it the second time around. So the first thing that I want to recap is something that we talked about back in December during Advent, um, the Sunday that we were talking about joy. And I told you that I was thinking about starting a joy journal, a book where I kept track of the things that brought me joy each day or things that I was thankful for. So I actually bought a little journal and it has some really neat sayings on the front of the journal. Here's a few. Be kind, work hard, smile often, stay humble. I think that those are good ones. How about another one? Be awesome today. And here's another one. Never stop learning. So, hey, those are all good advice to think about day to day. And on the inside of the journal, there are little sayings at the bottom of the pages, too, that make you think deep thoughts for that day. So I actually have written one joy in my journal, and that joy is the beautiful sunrise that I saw from my balcony. And I wrote a reminder here, see pictures and video. So anytime I need a reminder of that joy, I could go back and look at it. Okay, that's the first recap. The second recap has to do with John Wesley and the things that we talked about um, two weeks ago when we were talking about John Wesley's covenant service. Remember, a covenant is a promise. Well, I sent you some papers this week. I hope you got them. And one of the papers was called John Wesley and Me. And the idea behind this paper was that you would compare yourself to, to John Wesley and think about ways that you were like John or ways that you were different from John. So I filled out the paper for myself and here's a couple of the things um, that I filled out when I was thinking about how I'm the same or different from John. Mostly I would say I'm different than John. Here was one. John was born in England in a town called Epworth. Well, Miss Becky was born in the United States in a city called Rockford, Illinois. John's father, Samuel, was a pastor. Miss Becky's father, Richard, was an accountant. So far, we're, I don't seem to be too similar to John Wesley. I hope maybe you thought about this, too, and thought about ways you were similar or different from John Wesley. Well, that's the second recap, and that brings us to the main thing that I wanted to talk about today, and that is the fact that tomorrow is Martin Luther King Day. Now, you've probably learned a lot about Martin Luther King in school. And actually, we have some really nice books in our Godly Playroom about Martin Luther King. But since we're not there today and we're not going to be able to read the books, I thought maybe we could compare Martin Luther King to John Wesley using this same sheet. So... I looked up some information about Martin Luther King and filled out this paper for Martin Luther King. So we know John Wesley was born on June 17th of 1703. Well, Martin Luther King was born on January 15th, 1929. That's why we celebrate Martin Luther King's Martin Luther King Day in January because he was born on January 15th. 
John Wesley was born in England. We just heard about that. Well, Martin was born in the U.S. in the city of Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia is south of Pittsburgh. John's father, Samuel, was a pastor. Well, Martin's father was also named Martin. That's why Martin Luther King is called Martin Luther King Jr. And Martin's father was a pastor, too. So that's something where Martin and John Wesley are similar. John was a pastor. His father, Samuel, was a pastor. Martin Luther King Jr. was a pastor. His father, Martin Luther King Sr., was a pastor. John's mother was named Susanna. Martin's mother was named Alberta. That's a pretty name. John had lots of brothers and sisters. I think there were like 10, if I remember correctly. Well, Martin had an older sister named Christine and a younger brother named Alfred. John's mother taught John and his brothers and sisters at home. Martin's first school was called Young Street Elementary School, and it was a school for black children. So, why is Martin Luther King important, and why do we have a day named for him? Well, Martin Luther King Jr. was an American Christian minister and an activist, and he was a leader in the civil rights movement. What does all that mean? Well, the civil rights movement was some activities, mostly in the 60s, that where, where people were trying to get laws passed that would give black people some of the same rights and privileges that white people had, okay? And maybe this started from the time when Martin was very young and he went to the school that was only for black children because he wasn't allowed to go to a school that was only for white children. That was against the law. And that was one of the laws that Martin and the people that he worked with wanted to change. Now, the really interesting thing about Martin and the people that he worked with is that they were trying to get these laws changed in peaceful ways, ways that, that made people listen to them, but ways that didn't hurt people physically or cause destruction to, to people or buildings or things. And I think that's one of the things that we admire most about Martin and one of the reasons that we want to take this day to celebrate the work that he did. Um, if we were in our class and we had the, the, the books in front of us, we'd see lots of pictures of Martin and the work that he was doing. There's a really nice picture of him. This looks like sort of like an official portrait of Martin Luther King Jr. And a lot of the pictures that we see of Martin are of him giving speeches. That was one, something that he was really good at. And he learned to do, oh, even when he was in high school, he learned to give very persuasive speeches where he was trying to convince people to, to think some of the same things that he thought or to do some of the do things in the ways that he felt were the right way to do them. And his speeches were very, very powerful and are speeches that we remember even today. Um, and, and that's why he became very good as a pastor and as an activist and as a civil rights leader. So how are we going to celebrate Martin Luther King Day tomorrow, the day that's set aside to remember Martin and the, and the, the things that he did. 
Well, some people will have the day off from work. You'll probably have the day off from school. Um, some people might go sledding if there's enough snow or do things outside because it is January. Some people might go to the, to the shopping mall and see what's on sale. That's something that we sometimes like to do on holidays. But some people are going to celebrate Martin Luther King Day as a day of service. And I think that's something that Martin would really think was a good idea. And I think there's somebody else who might think that that's a good idea too. Can you think who that might be? Well, remember, this goes back quite a ways to one of our Godly Play sessions. John Wesley told us, do all the good you can in all the ways you can. That kind of means be of service to other people. So I think John Wesley and Martin would think that celebrating Martin Luther King Day as a day of service would be a really good idea. So how can we celebrate Martin Luther King Day as a day of service? Well, in our church, when we talk about being of service to people, we often think of a group called First Food and Friends. First Food and Friends meets at our church, First Church, every Saturday, every single Saturday around noontime. And First Food and Friends provides lunch every Saturday to people in the community who would like to come and have a meal. And we don't charge anything for the meal. It's free to whoever wants to come. And we serve many people in our community who really appreciate this meal that they don't have to pay for because it could be the best meal that they have of the entire week. And it's also a chance for them to gather together and um, to, to speak with each other and to speak with the volunteers who help to cook and serve the meal and just to have a, a chance to be in community and fellowship in, with each other. So this is, a, this is a very important ministry, a very important service that we do at our church. And so sometimes when we think of ways that we would like to be of service in our church, our church members, we try to think of ways that we could help First Food and Friends. Here's a few examples. In, at Halloween time in October, we made Halloween treat bags for the, the guests and community members who come to the Saturday lunch at First Food and Friends. A, a little bag of candy and treats, just like you probably got when you went trick-or-treating. And we handed it out to the um, to the community members who came for the lunch around Halloween time. And before Christmas, we did something very similar. And we made um, Christmas treat bags for the community members who come to the lunch at First Food and Friends on Saturday. And in the Christmas treat bags, we tried to put some healthy snacks like an orange, and some nuts, and one of our favorite snacks, some goldfish, and some other little treats. And we put a little card in there that said, Merry Christmas from your friends at First Church. And so the Christmas treat bags got handed out to the, the people who came for the, to the first Food and Friends lunch. And now we're thinking about doing another kind of um, special package for the people who come to First Food and Friends, a cold weather 
um, package that could be handed out in January or February when it when it's cold and sometimes it's hard to find a warm place to stay. So some of the things we're thinking of putting in those bags are a little pack of tissues so they can blow their nose if they need to, some chapstick so that if their lips get chapped in the cold they have something to to put on them to make them feel better. Um, maybe a tea bag so they can make a nice warm cup of tea or a packet of hot chocolate to make it a nice warm drink. Still thinking about some ideas of what we could put in those cold weather bags that um, could help our friends at First Food and Friends. So I hope that you spend tomorrow maybe getting some rest. It's always a good idea to get some rest. Thinking of ways that um, you could celebrate Martin Luther King Day as a day of service. Maybe it would be writing a note to somebody who would be so happy to hear from you. Somebody who doesn't get out of their house very much and would love to hear from somebody um, that with some happy news and or just to say, hi, I'm thinking of you today. That could be an idea. Maybe draw a picture for somebody or help your mom and dad. We, t we talk about um, those things as nice things to do. And those are ways to be of service. You can be of service to somebody in your own house. It doesn't have to be somebody that you don't know. So, like I said, I hope you enjoy the day. Um, I hope you think about Martin. I hope you think about John Wesley and some of the great messages that they've given us over the years. Miss Helen's been busy this week being of service to her patients, but I want you to know that she's making a list of stories that we're going to tell in these in the coming weeks, and those are good stories too, um, stories that will help us learn and grow and think of ways to be of service. So have a good week, and Miss Helen and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.